Hallelujah. We worship we you, We give Lord. you praise. We give Holy you glory. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Well, Hallelujah. good evening, everyone. And welcome to Life Springs Church Midweek Service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We trust you are having a wonderful week. And it's such a beautiful thing to be in the presence of God. Amen. We know God has something special for us. So let's just go ahead and plug in and receive all God has for us. Amen. Amen. As is our custom, we're just going to start with prayer. And then we'll go into a time of prayer, uh, praise and worship. So let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. For your love, we thank you for what you have prepared for your people mm. today. We thank you, Lord, that in this season of changes all around, in this season of um, unusual things, Lord, we thank you that you have made a way for us. <laughs> mm. You've opened the door for us. Mm. And we give you praise for our open doors of opportunity. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Lord, for what you have prepared for us for this service. Thank you, Lord. Lord we declare our ears are open, our hearts Amen. are open, our Amen. eyes are open. Amen. And we are prepared to receive. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, let's go into a time of praise and worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be. Hallelujah. Psalm 23, verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. <laughs> That's what we're singing about today. Oh, that His goodness and His mercy, His mercy follows us. You look past, you look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poor your love. You look beyond me. this far. You've brought us this far. We're going to sing a simple song saying, see how far you've brought us. Lord, we've come to worship you. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey. Oh, we've come to worship you. See
from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. You are worthy of all the praise. You're worthy of all the glory. You're worthy of all honor. You are worthy of all our adoration, Amen. oh God. We love on you tonight. Amen. We say you're worthy. Amen. Be thou exalted. Amen. Be exalted in Amen. our lives, oh God. Let your glory fill this room. Amen. Let your glory fill our church. Amen. Let your glory fill our homes. Amen. Let your glory fill our lives. Be at home, O oh God, in us. Lord, you are the God who has brought us this far. Hallelujah. And we just look to you and we just exalt you. We say, be exalted, O oh God. Be exalted. Be lifted high. Be magnified, O oh God. Be glorified. We worship you and we just love on you. We love you, Lord. We appreciate you. We celebrate Hallelujah. you. We glorify you. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 You know, there's that song that says, Oh, be lifted above all other gods. Hallelujah. We lay our crowns and worship, worship. you. Oh, glorious God, we praise you. And we lay our crowns and worship you. Mm -hmm. And I just like that we lay our crowns Amen. and worship you. So there's nothing that mm -hmm. we have attained. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that we will ever attain that mm -hmm. is not... Yeah. That is too big to Amen. live at the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's the one who has given it all to us. Amen. And he just deserves the glory. And so, yes, we lay our crowns before the King of Amen. Kings, before the Master, before the Lord of Lords, Amen. and we just worship him. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that Amen. you are the God who has brought us this glory. Far. Glory, glory. be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 You know, the last week we spent some time just mm. fasting and praying as a church. Yes, yes. And what a refreshing time mm -hmm. in God's presence. Mm -hmm. And what a blessing to be able to <laughs> pray together mm -hmm. and fast together mm -hmm. and just declare the word and mm -hmm. um, just seek <clears throat> God. Seek God, seek his word. We have scriptures we're praying with. Mm. And we want to thank everyone that joined us in that exercise. <laughs> More to come. You know, mm. that's not going to be the last time. Um, but just really wanted to appreciate you for joining in. And we trust God that your prayer life was um, pushed forward. Amen. We've talked here about how, mm. you know, in Matthew chapter 6, where mm. Jesus said, you know, when you give, and then when. talked about when you pray, and he Amen. talked about when, when you, you fast. fast. And um, thank God for the blessing mm -hmm. of being able to give, being able to pray, being able to fast. Amen. And so we just want to thank you so Amen. much for joining us Amen. on that journey. Amen. And these are some of the spiritual disciplines mm. that we believers need to be engaged in. Yes. Notice Jesus didn't say, if you give, yes. if you pray and if you fast. Mm. He said, when you give. Mm when you pray and when you fast. Yes. So as, as believers, we will get to do these things. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the blessing Amen. is we get to do it as a church Amen. family. Amen. There's also Amen. a blessing yes. that comes along with that, doing that corporately. Amen. Um, so recently we've been talking about the when you pray fast mm -hmm. fa uh, part, mm -hmm. you know, where we've been talking about Lord teach us to, to pray. pray. Um, but before we go into the message for today, just want to remind you that this is Life Springs Church, and really we're here for the kingdom of God and also here for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're here to help everyone, you know, become believers in Jesus, help mm -hmm. believers become disciples of Jesus, and mm -hmm. help disciples really reflect the abundant life of God in every sphere that God has placed them. And so if you do not have a church home or if you feel, um, you know, a burden on your heart to help in this work, we meet Sunday afternoons, by the way, so, you know, <laughs> it's something you can come around and help help us with. You know, please feel free to join us. Um, or, you know, if you just want to check us out, maybe you've never really attended church, mm -hmm. come and see. Mm -hmm. um, come and see. 
see, come and taste. That's what the woman at the well told the um, the Samaritan. She mm. said, well, come and see this man. Well, mm -hmm. you know, come, come and Hallelujah. see what God is doing in Life Springs Church. Amen. And I really believe that your life will not be the same again. And so we worship at Community Christian Church. Mm -hmm. in Yel That's also known as Yellow Box, 1635. Emerson Lane, Naperville, Illinois, 60540. We worship every Sunday in person at 2 p.m. And then we also meet here every Thursday online at 8 p.m. We'd really love to have you join us and fellowship with us. Amen. 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 Well, with that, we're going to move into today's session. Mm -hmm. Lord, teach us to, to pray. pray. And um, in the recent services, we did uh, a deep dive into what we call the Lord's Prayer. Yes. You know, and yes. we read, the Lord's Prayer shows up in multiple portions of scripture. Mm -hmm. We read through those and we learned about how you could actually pray the Lord's Prayer yes. by itself. Yes. You could use it as a model. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a secret, I believe, that you highlighted mm -hmm. last week, which is, you know, the secret of really forgiving. Yes. As our Heavenly Father forgives yes. us. And um, that was such a blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to read a quote that you, you shared. Mm -hmm. You said, forgiveness is removing yourself from the right to inflict vengeance. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that mm -hmm. means if somebody hurts me and, and all that, when I forgive them, mm -hmm. it's not be necessarily because they repented. Mm -hmm. It's because mm -hmm. I'm trusting God. Mm -hmm the righteous judge yes. to fight on my behalf yes. to, you know, bring about justice and judgment mm -hmm. on my behalf. And I'm looking to him mm -hmm. to restore to me whatever was stolen from me, whatever was lost. But mm -hmm. I have the capacity and the grace to forgive. Mm -hmm. I've been forgiving much so I can forgive much. Amen. Amen. And that's such a, you know, it's so important because Jesus kept emphasizing it hmm. when it comes to prayer yes and um one of the one of the things i try and do in life is find out what the lord emphasizes, yes and then emphasize it yes you know if we major on what god majors and minor on what god minors hmm. you know we will run into less problems hmm. in life so it's very very important you know we, so we talked about you can pray that portion of scripture. Yes. You can use it as a guideline. Yes. Um, there are principles on prayer that mm. it teaches you. Yes. And then also um, it, it, it reveals to you the different dimensions that prayer affects. Mm. You know, it affects our worship with God. It affects our needs being met. It affects direction. It affects mm. them deliverance from trials and the works of the devil. It, mm. it helps us deal with with the devils, mm. um, the attacks of the devil. Mm. And, and so prayer and, and restore relationships. So mm. it's so important to understand this and learn to pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor mm. Tayo, mm. I, I just um, mm -hmm. felt in my heart mm -hmm. um, to share the scripture yes, um, about praying for our nation. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've been talking about Lord teach us to pray. And as you were talking that just now, that line was highlighted in my heart. Your kingdom come mm -hmm. and your will be done on earth. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, for those of us in the United States of America, we are entering into heightened um, political uh, a heightened political season. And it's been very unstable. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, what I want to encourage us to do, there's a scripture mm -hmm. that God has given us to actually use to pray mm -hmm. for our leaders, for mm -hmm. our current president, for, you know, just those in positions of authority. It is 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. It says, Therefore I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, you could say presidents and leaders and governors, mm -hmm. senators, judges, you know, for kings and all those who are in authority and that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who, who desires, desires all, all men to, to be, be saved, saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Mm. And so our prayers for those in positions of authority 
is not just for our benefit, but it will mm -hmm. bless us. Mm -hmm. It's not just for the benefit of the nation, but it will bless the nation. It's mm -hmm. also for the benefit of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And so let's just pray. If you pray in other tongues, pray in other tongues, because it's God who knows exactly what he has in mind. But mm -hmm. he needs us, he needs you and I, mm -hmm. believers, mm -hmm. to stand in the gap mm -hmm. on behalf of our land. Mm -hmm. And so I want to encourage us, don't, mm -hmm. don't presume that, well, that's the political sphere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not running for office. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I'm not going to, you mm -hmm. know, do, mm -mm, don't do that. <clears throat> Just pray, pray for the land, mm -hmm. pray for leaders. Amen. Amen. In fact, I, I think it's, um, it's interesting that the Lord put it on our, on my heart, um, to run a series on prayer hmm. at this season because hmm. he wants our prayer life to step up hmm. and, he, and we need to remind ourselves yes. of our responsibility yes. in prayer. One of the reasons why God puts believer, believers in a particular land is so hmm. that we can pray for that land. Hmm. So it's our responsibility and let's not allow the devil um, destroy things. Mm -hmm. You know, let's pray mm -hmm. and let's not be complacent. Yes. You know, assuming that the devil cannot do certain things. Yeah. You know, one of, I remember this probably been about um, maybe 10, 15 years ago. I remember w one day I, I was just praying and the Lord said, you know, there are many Christians in the United States who have this false sense of security mm. that nothing like a civil war can ever happen here. And I said, you know, that it, 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 it's God that holds a nation. That's right. It's God that holds a nation. It's yes. not the devil. Yes. So if we don't engage God, the devil can do what he wants to do. Yes. He wants to remove peace. He wants to kill, steal, and mm. destroy. Mm. Thank God for what we've enjoyed. Hallelujah. We don't, but we don't want to be complacent. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and in teaching on prayer, Jesus said, lead us not into temptation. Mm but deliver us from the evil one. Mm -hmm. You know, you can pray that over your life individually. You can pray that over your family. You can pray yes. that over your nation. Yes. Lord, lead us as a nation not into temptation yes. so that we don't go into unnecessary tests and trials yes. Yes. and deliver us as a nation from the evil one, yes. from his plans, from his plots yes. to destroy. Thank God we missed a major one a few weeks ago. Yes. But I don't think the devil is done with his plots against this nation. Mm. So let's not be complacent. Let's mm. keep praying yes. for those in positions of authority. Yes. Let's keep praying for the processes. Let's yes. keep praying that God's will will prevail, that Amen. God's light will shine, Amen. that who God wants to be elevated, God will give us light to see, Amen. and that good things will be done for the, for the land. Amen. 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 Well, today we're still teaching on prayer, and, um, and today I want to emphasize the profound and um, amazing things Jesus said about prayer. Wow. And um, prayer is so powerful that if we truly believe what Jesus said about prayer, our prayer lives can never be the same again. Mm. So I want us to start in John chapter 11. And verse 22, um, for lack of time, we'll just go. The context is um, Lazarus, um, one of Jesus' friends, had died. And Mary and Martha were grieving. And they were telling Jesus, if you were here, you know, he wouldn't have died. But I want you to see what um, I believe uh, this was Marth Martha that said to Jesus. Yes. Um, in fact, let's start from verse 21. 21. It says, Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. That's hmm. a very loaded statement, hmm. you know. But thank God Jesus understands. That's one thing I love about Jesus. Yeah. You know, he, he doesn't, he doesn't, he's not sensitive. Hmm. The Bible says, Love is not easily angered, love hmm. is not touchy. Hmm. Jesus is not touchy. So sometimes you can tell him what you feel. Mm. Now she was wrong, mm. <laughs> but Jesus, Jesus still received it because mm. it was raw emotions. Mm. So he understood. But notice what she said, verse 23, I mean 22. 22. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, he will give you. God now, will give you. notice 
He said, whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Mm. She said, I know this. Mm. I know this. I am not guessing. I am not, I mean, I know that I know that I know that if you ask anything of God, God will give it to you. Wow. Now, I believe every Christian believes this. Mm. That, oh, of course, if Jesus asks anything, it will be done. Yeah. But then, when we now begin to read what Jesus actually said, the question is, do we believe Jesus? Mm. So I want us to start in Matthew and chapter 7 and verse 7. And we are looking at the profound and amazing things Jesus said about prayer. Mm. That if you believe them, it will change your life. Because if you believe them you will act on them. Yes. And if you act on them, your life will never be the same again. Amen. So I want us to read um, Matthew 7 from verse 7 and to verse 11, please. Okay. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks, it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, this is a profound promise. <laughs> if you believe it, hmm. your life will never be the same. Hmm. Now, again, I, I want you to read it because sometimes we read this through brainwashed <laughs> minds. Oh, oh, we've been in church all, all these years. I remember growing up in church, growing up in Sunday school. They said this, oh, um, the Bible says um, there are certain things you ask God, he will say yes. There are certain things you ask him, he says no. There are certain things you ask him, he says maybe. And they never gave <laughs> us a scripture for that. Now, and they, and they always gave us this impression, you never know what God is going to say yes to, mm. what God is going to say no to, mm. or what God is going to say maybe to. Mm. So in other words, just throw all your prayers at God and the one that touches, well, if it hits him, and fine, <laughs> then you get an answer. But the rest that you miss, you miss, you know, at least you try it, you know. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, if that's the best we can, I will take it. But that is not what Jesus said. Hmm. You see, again, we need, to, we need to, there's a difference between tradition and scripture. That's right. Sometimes tradition is unscriptural, hmm. and sometimes it is scriptural. But let's see what Jesus said again. Jesus said, ask, verse 7, and it will be given to you. Yes. Therefore, if it's not being given to you, you are not asking. Hmm. He said, seek and you will find. Knock and, the door, and, it, and it will be opened unto you. Now, this deals with three dimensions or three ways we use prayer. One is to ask, one is to seek, and one is to knock. Okay, there are certain things that you should be seeking. It's not necessarily an asking thing. Hmm. Okay, there are certain things you should be knocking. It's not just a seeking thing. But in general, this is the principle. And verse 8, I remember the first day I really, really, re and verse 8 came alive to me. I said, wow, I actually did not believe it when I first read it. Notice it said, for everyone. <laughs> hmm. You know, everyone includes you. Yes. <laughs> everyone includes me. Yes. He said, for everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And he who knocks, it to be open. Then he now gives it more context, what he means by asking. He said, if any man, um, or what man is it there among you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone. Hmm. We know there is no earthly father if their son asks for something like bread. A responsible father will give a stone. There's no earthly father who will do that. Mm. In fact, I remember, um, I remember um, during the 
um, Gulf War, the Second Gulf War. Mm. I remember when um, I think it was when Saddam Hussein was died. I remember um, his daughter was being interviewed. Mm. I, I if I remember right, and she said he was such a good father. He always gave me everything, and I said that a lot of people considered him a monster, but yet his own daughter. Mm. So, so no matter how bad people are to the world, their yes. own, they will treat well. Yes. So Jesus said that, which one of you, <laughs> if his son asks for, <laughs> for a bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? That, no natural father will do that, you know, except there's really something wrong, <laughs> but that's yeah. not the norm. Then he said, if you then even know how to give good gifts, then it now qualifies, how much more will your heavenly father give good things to those who ask him? Hmm. So the contest is when you are asking, it has to be a good thing. Yeah. But as long as it's a good thing, you can get it from God. Yes. He said, if you being evil know how to give good things to your children. Hmm. So one way to interpret it is, if I had an, uh, an earthly father and I was going to make a request of this from my earthly father and my earthly father had the resources, will he get, give me? Yes. If you can say yes, then you know you can get that from God. That's right. Because at a minimum, God is better than your, <laughs> far better than your earthly father. Yes. And if your earthly father being evil will do that good thing, God will much more do better. Yes. And so Jesus is telling you now what you can expect in prayer. And if you believe this, ask. Yes. See, many people, they don't really believe it. Hmm. So they don't ask. Hmm. But this is one of the greatest promise hmm. <laughs> Jesus has given us. Hmm. You see, Mary said, Jesus, whatever you ask God the Father, he, I know he will give it yes. to you. But Jesus here is telling us, no, you too. Mm. <laughs> Whatever you ask your heavenly father, if it is good, you will get it. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, this is what running around, this is what dancing around. Can you imagine <laughs> if it is good, I can get it from God. Mm. Now, I want you to, let's go to Luke's version of this scripture. Let's go to Luke 11. Um, this is just after um, Luke talked about um, the Lord's Prayer. And then let's start from verse 5, actually. Again, this, this, this is such a profound promise. Can you imagine? You know, sometimes I just sit down and think, wow, I can get anything good from God. Mm. <laughs> if it's a good thing. Yeah. I can get anything that my earthly father will give me. Mm. I can get much more from God. Yes. Because some of, I mean, some people, the earthly fathers are limited. Mm. They might want to, but they might not be able to. Mm. But thank God our Heavenly Father is not limited. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory so God. let's go ahead and look, read Luke's version, Luke 11, starting from verse 5. Okay. That says, And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, Lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has come to me on his journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, Do not trouble me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give it to you. I say to you, though he will not rise and give it to him because he is his friend, yet... Because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Amen. Go, then let's keep going. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks it will be opened. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? 
If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, your Heavenly Father, give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Amen. 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 So here, Jesus gives, it, it gives a little more detail. And hmm. Jesus told the story about a friend going to another, a friend, somebody's friend coming to him at midnight and telling the person, notice at midnight is not the time you go visit people. That's true. So it's the most inconvenient time. No, that's number one. Number two, you are asking for food for a friend who sh did not even tell you was going to come. So it's not even your problem. <laughs> it's mm. the problem of somebody else. <laughs> we were saying, why can't you wait till morning? <laughs> it's the most inconvenient time. Mm. If he doesn't get it and he, he waits till morning, he won't die. Hmm. So why does he need the three loaves of bread now? You understand what I'm trying to say? And he said that even though the right response should be, I'm in bed, come back another time. He said, but because of his persistence, I, I like the NLT version of that. It says, because of, his, of your shameless <laughs> persistence. Hmm. It, it, it means audacity. Hmm. Because of, of, of your audacity, it's, it, it's um, a, a lack of being ashamed, hmm. asking in such a way. That's what the Bible means when it says, let us come boldly yeah. to the throne of grace. Yes. Coming with such lack of shame. Yes. Like Oliver Twist. <laughs> you, know, come, you can ask because you know, you know you're not going to be turned away. Yes. That is why he got it. He yes. didn't get it because it was a friend. Hmm. You see, some of us think we get it because we are close to, to God. God. No, Jesus said he got it because he was, he, he asked in such a way that, I mean, he, he couldn't care. Hmm. He couldn't care. He, he couldn't care like how David was dancing before the Lord. And people said that, what are you doing? You're a king. And he said, well, if you think I'm undignified now, I will be more undignified. He couldn't care. And there's that kind of mindset when it comes to asking from God. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus said, so I say to you. So when he's talking about ask, this is what he means. Mm. Because he said, ask and you will receive. Yes. But some people say, well, first of all, I asked and I didn't receive. But Jesus said, everyone who asks receives. Mm. Now, we know Jesus cannot lie. That's At right. least I, be, I hope you believe Jesus cannot lie. So if Jesus cannot lie, mm. then that means maybe you've not been asking. Mm. And then Jesus explains what it means by asking. Mm. Asking in such a way that there is an audacity behind of it. There is a boldness behind of yeah. it. There is a lack of shame behind of it. Yes. There is a lack of, I know I will not be turned down. Yes. And asking in the context of something that is good. Yes. In other words, you are not going to go and ask for stone. Yes. Instead of bread. You are not going to ask for you are not going to ask for something dangerous. You know? Because again, when people begin to see scriptures like this, sometimes people become foolish and they and they begin to oh, Lord, can I ask for somebody else's wife? No, you can't. <laughs> because that is not good. Yes. <laughs> you know? You can't, you know, but as long as it is good, yes. you can get it. This is a profound scripture. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, I, I keep thinking of our little ones, mm -hmm. the, the really little ones. Mm -hmm. When they want something, <laughs> you, there is no, you have no choice. <laughs> if you want to move past whatever, mm -hmm. if you want to continue whatever you are working mm -hmm. on, you better give it to them. Mm -hmm. Although, I mean, so of course, if it's good, you get, they're getting yes. it. <laughs> As, if, you, as if it's long good, as it's good and you have it, and I have it they will get it. Yes, that's now, right. Now, the good news is God has it. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. So you can get it. That's right. But this is, I mean, this is so, if you believe it, this will change your prayer life. Mm. Because there are certain things people don't ask because they just don't ask. They just don't think, oh, God will never do it for me. You know, and notice it doesn't have to be something important. Some people have this mindset. I only tell God important things and things that are not important. I don't tell God. Mm. But notice this man came for bread at midnight for somebody that wasn't him. It was his friend mm. who came at a very awkward time. Mm. 
but because of his attitude mm. and his mindset, he mm. got it. And, and can so, I just add something here? Mm. I think sometimes the reasons the reason we don't ask is because we feel unworthy. Yes. Or we feel like we have sinned, we did this, we don't mm -hmm. quote unquote feel righteous, even mm -hmm. though we are the righteousness yes. of God in Christ yes. Jesus. But maybe you feel far, mm -hmm. or maybe you feel like you haven't mm -hmm. been faithful in mm -hmm. your devotional mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. Thank God that you can pick back from where you are, mm -hmm. you know, but that's not the qualification yeah. for the father mm -hmm. meeting the needs of his children. Mm -hmm. He said, ask. Yeah, yeah. He said, ask. And mm -hmm. um, it, I mean, as you're teaching, even I'm being challenged, yeah. you know, ask. Uh, there's some things that have been a burden and, mm -hmm. you know, you, you want to. And that's the other point, you know, part of why we don't ask is you have a way that you are going to get that thing that you need. And then you, that way seems like a burden. Mm. So let's say, for example, I mean, I'll give you a practical example. I want to finish my basement, mm -hmm. but it's like there's this burden and that burden and this burden and that burden, you mm -hmm. know, that we have to overcome mm -hmm. to get that basement finished. Mm -hmm. But I can ask mm -hmm. God. Mm. I can ask God in spite of the burdens that I see, mm. in spite of the challenges that I'm aware of that I think needs to be overcome mm -hmm. before I see what I'm looking for. That Jesus didn't say, take care of the obstacles mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. you ask. Mm -hmm. Just ask. Mm -hmm. And so recently I said, you know what? It's my birthday. I'm going to ask God for what I desire. Yeah, yeah. And I ask God. Mm -hmm. And like this um, gentleman in you know, Luke chapter 11, mm -hmm. I will just keep asking God. Mm -hmm. I will see it. I mm -hmm. will see the manifestation mm -hmm. of it. I don't, my job is not to worry about mm -hmm. how many children you know, God needs to cross over to, to get to my own. And mm -hmm. that's, that's mm -hmm. you know, just like this friend did not need to worry mm -hmm. about whether it's a baby or who mm -hmm. <laughs> the owner of the bread is sleeping mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. Just come give me my bread, yeah. you yeah. know, or the bread I need. Mm -hmm. and, and having a mindset that God is your father. Yes. Makes a big difference. Yes, yes. It really, really makes a difference. Yes. When you understand God is your father, then there's a kind of... um. There's an access. Yes. There's a, you know, there's a, you, you don't have to arm twist him. Yes. To get what you want. Yeah. There's a, def, you know, de, you know, there's just a default thing that, oh, I, I will get it. And God is predisposed yes. to blessing us. Because he's it's, our father. Yes, exactly. You know, he said, he said that be of little chair. It is a be father's good chair. good chair. It's a father's good pleasure. To give you his kingdom, yes. he, he, he desires to do it. Yes. What father wants to wants to his child to suffer? Mm. But there's that mindset that when you have it, it changes how you ask. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Glory be to God. Let's look at a couple more scriptures on again this mindset of us. Jesus teaching us. And these are profound and amazing things. You know, I want you to go meditate on those scriptures yes. because when I, when I want to ask God for big things, I, I go back and I just reread the scriptures. Yes. And I say, wow, Jesus yes. meant what he said and yes. he cannot lie. Yes. I'm going to ask. Look, can I, can I actually just mm -hmm. another example just mm -hmm. very quickly is the prodigal son. Mm -hmm. I mean, he went as far from the father mm -hmm. <laughs> as far can mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. in that culture, in mm -hmm. that day and age, mm -hmm. you know, and what he was going to ask for was an opportunity to be his father's servant. Mm -hmm. And look what the father, it's like you could see the father's heart predisposed to forgive, mm -hmm. predisposed to give, mm -hmm. predisposed to bless, mm -hmm. predisposed to restore. Mm -hmm. And so as the son began to ask to at least even just be in that same environment, God mm -hmm. was ready to meet him with mm -hmm. that need and more. And, and so I just want to encourage you that it's not your righteousness. It's not, oh, you know, mm -hmm. I, am I like Pastor Tayo that <laughs> makes you qualified mm -hmm. to be blessed by the Lord? If that's not what qualifies you to receive from God when you ask, it is God's love and God's Amen. predisposition Amen. towards us. And, and something that will help, and this is something that I had to overcome, when it came to asking God, 
it is not my job to figure out how God is going to do it. That's right. See, many times we only, many people only ask God for things they think God, they can, they can see how God is going to yeah. do it. But one of the things you have to train yourself is, I don't know how God is going to do it, mm. but I know God can do it. That's right. And I know he wants to do it because yes. he's my heavenly father. Yes. I know if my, my earthly father had the resources my heavenly father had, I know this need will be met. That's right. Therefore, I know my heavenly father who is far better mm. than my earthly father will meet that need. Amen. That's how you have to think yes. and then ask with that kind of mindset. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's look at again another profound and amazing thing Jesus said about prayer in Matthew 21 and verse 22. And this is Jesus had just caused the fig tree and was telling them, you know, in verse 20, 21. So Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly, um, I think it's the one version says, Truly, truly, or verily, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to this fig tree, but you but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, it will be done. And verse twenty two, and whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Hmm. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing mm -hmm. you will receive. But I want you to see how we started in verse 21. He said, assuredly, because he was telling them something that they probably, if it didn't come from the mouth of Jesus, it would be something very hard to believe. Mm. Because I'm, Jesus said, I'm telling you the truth. Mm. <laughs> now, we know Jesus has never lied. He will never lie. But sometimes he qualifies this profound statement that, mm. look, this is a true statement. And, and I want you to go and see what he said. Whatever hmm. things you ask in prayer, and then the qualifying is believing hmm. you will receive. Whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Now let's look at Mark's version of this in Mark 11 and verse 24. Uh, and again, these are just... So, there are profound things that Jesus said about prayer, amazing things, wonderful things that we really, really need to tap into. Mark 11 verse 24, it says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Hmm. Then verse 25 says, And whenever you stand praying, if you have any anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. And we camped on this last time. So here, something very important for prayer to be effective is believing yes. and forgiving. Hmm. Believing and forgiving. The first scripture we said... Some things that are important is asking with audacity, asking with boldness, and seeing God as your father, mm. and making sure you are asking for good things. Mm. And here he's saying that believing and forgiving, mm. these are important in receiving prayer. But whatever you ask for in prayer, believing, mm. you will receive. Yeah. Now, obviously, there are certain things you cannot believe because God has not promised. Yes. You can only believe what God has promised. Yes. But whatever things you ask for in prayer, hmm. believing you will receive. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe you will re believe you receive. Now, notice what he didn't say. He didn't say whatever things you ask for, believe one day you receive. He said whatever things you ask for, uh, whatever you whatever things you ask when you pray, the, the, that moment you pray. Believe you receive, yeah. then you will have it. Someone mm. says, what's the difference? It, it, it's almost like um, if, I, if I buy a, a ticket to fly yes. and I call in and I pay 
and they, they said, oh, you have the ticket. Yes. And they give me a confirmation number. I believe I have the ticket. Now, yes. in the old days, you actually used to get a physical ticket. Mm. And sometimes it might take, you know, a week to get a physical ticket. Mm. But you don't have to wait until that physical ticket comes before you believe you have it. Mm -hmm. You know, many times some of us order from Amazon and so on and so forth. And once you order, you believe you have the product. Then the product comes. Mm -hmm. But notice for the product to come, the first thing you need to believe you receive it when you pray. Yeah. When that order is placed, you believe you have the Amazon product. Yes. It's just a matter of time for it to show up. Yes. So if somebody asks you, do you have a product you say yes, and they say, "Where is it? It's, it's coming. On its, way. <laughs> it's on its way." And that's what, so. So if somebody says, "Well, do you have what you're asking for?" Yes. Mm. So he says, "Where is it? It's on its way." Mm. Because I believe when I pray, that's when I receive it. Mm. Now it will show up in the future, but when I receive it is when I pray. Mm. Hallelujah! Mm. And again, this but that's amazing. If you can just learn to do that. Oh my, what you will get. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Well, we have time for one more. Let's, let's go to John. Um, actually, let's go to two more. Um, let's, let's start with John 16. John 16 and verse 23. And these are amazing things Jesus said about prayer. John 16 and verse 23. Why don't you read it? 23 and 24. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly. I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive, that your joy may be full. Hallelujah. Amen. This is dancing ground. Glory be to God. <laughs> now, the day he's talking about is the day of this resurrection. Hmm. After he's died, after he's been buried, after he's resurrected. He said in that day... We, we don't have to ask him. We can go to the Father in his name. Mm. See, before then, they always relied on Jesus for all their prayer. <laughs> so that's why, you remember what Martha said, I know whatever you ask the God, he will give it to you. Mm. Because Jesus did all their prayer for them. But Jesus said, no, no, no. You, you can go to the Father in my name. Mm. You can go to the Father in my name. Mm. He said, you know, you know, whatever you ask. He said, until now, you have asked nothing. In my name. Now, the name of Jesus speaks of his authority, mm. speaks of his character, mm. speaks of, it's almost like Jesus has given us, a, what do you call, a, a, an attorney? Um, power of attorney. Power of attorney. His signet ring. Yes, he's given <laughs> us a power of attorney. Now, once you, when, when you give somebody a power of attorney, that person can make decisions for you yeah. in line with your will. Yes. So sometimes, you know, when you are buying properties, you give your property, your attorney a power of attorney to execute the contract for you. Mm. Well, here, Jesus has given us a power of attorney mm. so we can approach the Father in his name. Amen. And we know Jesus will never get turned down. That's right. That's what, that's what Martha said. I know, <laughs> I know that if you ask, you will get it. Mm. Well, because Jesus has given us his name, when we approach the Father, we see it as Jesus approaching the Father, mm. and we know he will not be turned down. Mm. Now, the only, diff the only thing is you, have to, you can only ask in his name. Mm. So you can't ask for things that don't stand, that is outside his name. Yeah. So I can't ask, oh Lord, kill everybody. <laughs> you know, God, doesn't, God is not a murderer, right? Yes. You know, so, but you can ask in his name. He said, mm. whatever, whatever you ask the Father in his name, you know, he will give it. He said, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. And I love mm. that. He wants our joy full. Yes. He wants our joy full. Mm. So if you're a believer and you are going without your joy being full, Jesus has made a provision for you to get your joy full. Amen. Don't rob yourself. Mm. Don't rob yourself. Don't cheat yourself. Mm. You can have things that make your joy full mm. as long as it's in its name mm. and as long as you can ask in its name you can mm. always have that mm. hallelujah Amen. oh this is so p powerful he said up till now you've asked nothing mm. and that's why jesus again you see here jesus qualified it most assuredly mm. 
hmm. because he was telling them something that was a profound statement hmm. that if they really, really believed it, it would change how they lived, hmm. how they prayed, how they acted. Hmm. It's like, wow, I will never go without my joy being full hmm. again. Glory be to God. Amen. This is such a powerful promise. Hmm. I mean, if you, even if you just got to cash in on 10% of this promise, <laughs> your life will never be the same again. <laughs> That's why one of the things I say is, if you're a believer, I don't feel sorry for you because can you imagine you have this promise? What are you doing with this promise? Wow. He said, ask <laughs> that you will receive that your joy may be full. Hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. And let's close with this. And then next week we'll pick up some other things, powerful things on prayer. Um, John 15 and verse 7. This is one of my all-time favorite on prayer. John 15 and verse 7. Hallelujah. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire. Huh. And it will be done for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. Glory be to God. Mm. You know, sometimes people come up with all kinds of things that are not scriptural. That, oh, you can't ask for what you desire. Mm. But that is not what he said. Now, there are conditions yeah. on it. But there is a way in God to get your desires met. Amen. There is a way. Mm. There is a provision in God to get your joy full. Mm. There is a prov provision in God to get things that you need. Mm. <laughs> there is a provision in God to get good things. Mm. These are amazing, mm. <laughs> glorious, Amen. wonderful Amen. things Jesus said about prayer. Mm. We'll, we're going to pick up John 15 and 7 next time. But I, I, want, to, I want to say this. And then I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, in, in First Peter, no, Second Peter, Second Peter, um, chapter, Second Peter one, verse two. He says, "Grace and peace be multiplied to you, in the knowledge of God and of and of Jesus our Lord, as His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life." And godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us by glory and virtue. Now this way I'm going, verse 4. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and mm. precious promises. Mm. That through these, these exceeding great and precious promises, mm. you may be partakers of the divine nature. Wow. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world true mm. loss. You know, Jesus has given us exceeding mm. great <laughs> and precious promises on prayer. Mm. These are precious. Mm. These are great. I mean, <laughs> hallelujah. Mm. He said, up till now, you've asked nothing in my name, but ask mm. that you may receive mm. that your joy will Maybe be full. Before. That is a great promise. Glory to God. That, is, that is an ex... I mean, that's why if they take everything you have from you, but you still have this promise, you'll be mm. fine. Mm. <laughs> because if I have this promise, I cannot be a victim in life. Mm. Because I have a way to get what I desire. Mm. I have a way to get what will give me joy. Mm. Glory be to God. Mm. Glory be to God. Mm. Amen. Amen. I want you to see these promises as great. Yeah. They're not just, they're just, and I want you to use them as a tool. Yes. Use them, cash in on them, yes. write checks on these promises yeah. and go to God. I thank you that you cannot lie. Yeah. You made this promise. I cash in on this promise. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Write checks was a figurative statement. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> on these promises. You know, in other words, use them. Yes. Use them. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory be to Amen. God. Amen. I, I love what it says about the exceedingly great and precious promises. And so these are, we, we touched on it last week. There is something to discovering the will of, what mm -hmm. the will of God is. Yes. Um, which includes, you know, his promises and just going through the Bible, there are 
prayers and promises and blessings um, that, you know, we are blessed to be able to lay hold on mm. and to pray, mm. you know, and you just keep declaring them. Um, maybe one of these days I'll have the opportunity to share mm. the testimony of our son's healing. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, some years ago he was in a life-threatening situation and the doctors did not know what to do. Mm -hmm. And all I had was this exceeding great. great and precious promises. I don't know how many hours I prayed them over him. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many hours mm -hmm. I sang them over him. Mm -hmm. I just kept at it. I said, mm -hmm. thank you, Lord, for victory. Amen. Thank you that by the stripes of Jesus, my son Amen. is healed. Amen. Thank you that he's healthy and whole. Nothing is missing or broken in his body. Mm -hmm. Nothing is missing or broken in his cell, his organs, his tissues, his systems. I mean, mm -hmm. they were saying, oh, this, this, this function mm -hmm. might shut down. This organ mm -hmm. might shut down. I said, not my son. Mm -hmm. He is healthy and whole from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. He was too young to declare these promises over himself. But thank God that I had discovered some of these promises mm -hmm. before then and they just started to come out. And 15 days later, we were discharged Hallelujah. with a healthy and whole Hallelujah. baby to the glory of God. Hallelujah. But what was our weapon? The, the promises. Exceeding. The exceeding great, great and precious promises. In my case, we needed it for healing. Mm -hmm. But some of you might need it for finances. Some of you might need it for your walk with the Lord. Some of you might need it for ministry. Maybe God is putting on your mm -hmm. heart to do more for his kingdom or to be a oh, blessing to mm -hmm. people. Or whatever it is your God marriage, is putting on your, your heart. Children. Yes, marriage, children, your career, your academics, mm -hmm. whatever it is, your health. Mm -hmm. Just want to encourage you that there are exceedingly great and precious promises that we can pray and lay you. hold on. You know? So you're right. It is like a blank check. I mean, that we, yes. it is a, this is like, wow. Yes, <laughs> yes. Again, I want to say to you, if you're a believer, hmm. Jesus has made some exceeding great hmm. and precious promises Glory to you. To God. You are not a victim. Amen. You have something that can change your life forever. Yes. Please use this. Yes. Use this yes. promises. Amen. Let's go ahead and take the communion. And as we take the communion, let's just thank him. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Lord, we want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. For your exceeding great. Mm. <laughs> your precious promises. Mm. Lord, if all you did was to save us from going to hell, and you said, in this world, we would have to mm. suffer mm. and be mistreated and be abused and be tread upon. But heaven is good. Lord, that's still a great deal. Mm. <laughs> because the, the sufferings of this world mm. are nothing to be compared mm. to the glory of the world to come. Hallelujah. But Lord, in this world, you gave us your exceeding great and precious promises so that we can partake of your divine nature, mm -hmm. the very life of God, and escape the corruption, mm. the destruction in this world. Mm. Thank you for this promise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you told us concerning prayer. Thank you. Lord, we believe you. Amen. And we thank you for shedding your blood for mm. us. Thank you for breaking your body for us. Thank you, and Lord. And as we receive your broken body and your shed blood, mm. we declare we walk in this exceeding great Amen. and precious promises. Yes, Lord. Let's just go ahead and take it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We are so grateful. <laughs> We are so grateful. Amen. We are so grateful. Just go ahead and let's package our tithes and offerings and love gifts. Hallelujah. We Hallelujah. believe in giving yes. and honoring the Lord. <laughs> Remember, you know, God is not, uh, God, God, is, God doesn't need charity. We're not giving God because he needs something in that sense. We are giving him because we want to honor him. Amen. We want to thank him. Mm. The Bible says in Psalm 24 verse 1, the whole earth is the mm. Lord's and mm. the fullness thereof, mm. the world and everyone in it. Mm. 
So even what we are giving to him actually belongs to him. Mm. But out of that which he has allowed us to control, mm. we're just saying, Lord, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for blessing us. Thank, thank you, you for helping us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for bringing us this far. Thank you, And Jesus. as we honor you, we declare we are honored in life. Amen. And we activate the grace of 2 Corinthians 9, 8. We declare we always have all sufficiency, Amen. even in economic depressions, Amen. even in economic tough times. Yes. And we can always abound to every good work. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow. Glory be to God. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Hallelujah. Thank you again, Pastor Tayo, for that awesome word. And um, just want to encourage you, you know, tell a friend or two about our midweek services. Um, the nice thing is if you can't make it Thursday at 8 p.m., it is out there. You can watch it anytime. You can Hallelujah. catch up on prior um, sermons and um, we really believe they'll bless you mm -hmm. and uh, just want to invite you to our Sunday service this Sunday at 2 p.m. Um, Pastor Taya is having a very special uh, teaching session yes. on the baptism of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit. and um, this is something that you I know you really enjoy teaching yeah. and I really believe that people's yeah. lives will be impacted. Amen. If you if you have never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues and you would like to receive it, please join us. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, we will teach on it and we will minister to you and you will receive it by God's grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, this particular one, Pastor Ty actually asked me to let, you know, parents know that it's also available for your children. Yes. <laughs> yes. So children, anyone eight and above, you know, even earlier, but for sure, any child eight and above can receive. So, mm. you know, I, I want to encourage parents, you know, nowadays there are so many children who are full of the devils mm. and full of devils and they do all kinds of harm and destruction in schools. You know, we hear of people who are so full of the devil, they kill their fellow classmates. Why don't we have our children full of the Holy Ghost mm. and going to be a light mm. in their campuses? Mm. So if you have children who want to, and they should want to receive, mm. you know, if you're a parent and your children are not filled with the Holy Ghost, bring them. We're going to be praying for them. For sure, eight and above, you know. So some of our children received before they were eight years old. Mm. I think I first received when she was about two to three years old, mm. you know. So, but for sure, anybody eight and above, we're going to pray they will receive it. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen, amen. So you don't want to miss this one Sunday at 2 p.m. at uh, Community Christian Church, Yellow Box, 1635 Emerson Lane, Naperville, Illinois, 60540. We look forward to having you. Have a blessed rest of your week. God bless you. Amen.